All right, the universe unveiled uh, today. Talk about a title that, that sets the bar high. We're going to explore some pretty mind-bending uh, concepts today. Dark matter, entropy, time, even consciousness, um, the source material really goes for it. Suggesting that reality uh, might have more to it than meets the eye or even the most powerful telescope. And one of the most intriguing threads throughout the source is this emphasis on how many of the universe's most fundamental aspects are, surprisingly, non-physical. Yeah, it's like trying to understand a play by only looking at the set design and uh, and costumes, you're missing like the entire story, the characters' motivations, the themes. Precisely. The source argues that focusing solely on the observable, physical aspects of the universe might uh, be leaving us with a very incomplete picture of what's really going on. Okay, so let's start unpacking this with something appropriately mysterious. Dark matter. What exactly is it, and how do scientists even know it's there if we can't see it? Well, think about a galaxy with all its stars swirling around a central point. We can calculate how fast those stars should be moving based on the amount of visible matter, the stuff we can see. But here's the catch. They're moving way faster than they should be. So something's messing with the gravitational dance, but we can't see what? Exactly. That's where dark matter comes in. It doesn't interact with light, so we can't see it directly, but its gravitational influence is undeniable. It's like there's this invisible scaffolding holding galaxies together. The source material points out that, um, based on these gravitational effects, we can infer that dark matter makes up a whopping 95% of the matter in the universe. 95%? I mean, that's mind-boggling. Uh, it makes you wonder what other invisible forces might be at play that we haven't even detected yet. But okay, sticking with things we think we understand, entropy. I'll admit, I used to think of it as a just a fancy way of saying everything falls apart eventually. That's a common misconception, but um, the source digs a bit deeper. Entropy is really about the increasing possibilities for arrangements of energy within a system. Okay, so more possibilities means uh, what exactly? Think about a perfectly ordered deck of cards. There's only one possible arrangement there, right? Now shuffle that deck suddenly, you've got countless possibilities, a huge increase in disorder or entropy, but that disorder actually represents a wider range of potential configurations. So it's not just about things breaking down, it's about the potential for change, for, well, more options. But how does that apply to, like, the universe as a whole. That's where it gets fascinating. The source explains that the universe is constantly evolving towards a state of maximum entropy, often referred to as heat death, where energy is so evenly dispersed that no further change is possible. It's like the ultimate shuffled deck of cards. Heat death uh, doesn't sound very pleasant, but wait, hold on. If entropy is always increasing, how do we get complex ordered structures like stars and galaxies in the first place? Excellent question. And that's where the source explores the delicate interplay between entropy and gravity. Gravity pulls matter together, creating areas of lower entropy like stars and planets. But even as these structures form, they release heat and radiation, which increases the overall entropy of the universe. It's a constant push and pull. So it's like we're living in this temporary pocket of order, thanks to gravity. While the universe as a whole marches towards ultimate disorder, that's... Uh unsettling, to say the least. Perhaps, but it also highlights how precious those pockets of order are. And it makes you wonder, if entropy is this fundamental force shaping the universe, what does it mean for the very fabric of reality itself? Okay, I'm sensing we're about to go down a serious rabbit hole here, but um, before we do, let's talk about another concept that Source throws into the mix, time and space. And are they even real in the way we typically think of them? Right, the Source material suggests that time and space might actually be uh, mental constructs. What exactly does that mean? Imagine you're watching a film, you perceive the flow of time as the sequence of frames, and you see space as the arrangement of those frames on the screen. But those are just ways for our minds to make sense of the film. The film itself isn't inherently bound by time or space in the way we experience them. So are you saying that time and space are just like tools? Like our brains are just hardwired to see the universe through this particular lens. But that doesn't mean it's the only way to see it. That's what the source seems to be suggesting. It's a radical idea, but it challenges us to think beyond our everyday perceptions. If time and space aren't absolute, if they're just mental constructs, then what is real? Okay, now my head is officially spinning. But, you know, thinking about time and space in this way actually makes the Big Bang even more mind-boggling. Because it calls into question the very idea of a before the Big Bang, right? Right. If time itself began with that initial expansion, as the source explains, then what does it even mean to ask what happened before? 
It's like asking what's north of the North Pole. Precisely. The source material emphasizes that while physics can explain what happened after the Big Bang, it hits a wall when it comes to that initial singularity. We're left with a profound mystery. So there was something before the Big Bang but we have no conceptual framework to even approach it. It seems that way. The source suggests that the Big Bang represents not just the beginning of the universe as we know it, but also the beginning of our very concept of time. It's a pretty humbling realization, isn't it? It is. And uh, it makes you wonder if there are other fundamental limitations to our understanding of the universe that we haven't even encountered yet. That's a question worth pondering, but let's shift gears for a moment and tackle another big one, consciousness. Ah, yes, the ultimate mystery. The source argues that consciousness is more than just data processing. It's about experiencing the world subjectively. I mean, a computer can process information, but it doesn't feel anything, right? Exactly. The source draws a distinction between the brain handling sensory input and consciousness actually interpreting that input into feelings, thoughts, and unique experiences. So my brain takes in all this data from my senses, but it's my consciousness that weaves it all together into my personal perception of reality. It's like the brain is the hardware and consciousness is the software. That's a good analogy, but here's where it gets really interesting. If consciousness isn't just a product of the physical brain, where does that interpretation happen? Whoa, now we're getting into some truly mind-bending territory. Are you saying that even though our brains are physical organs, our consciousness might not be entirely physical? That's one of the big questions the source raises. And it's a question that neuroscience and physics alone might not be equipped to answer. It leads us to consider whether there might be aspects of reality that are simply beyond the reach of our current scientific methods. Okay, my brain is officially full. I need a moment to process all of this. Take your time. These are uh, big ideas to grapple with. But speaking of ideas that challenge our understanding of reality, the source delves into something that sounds straight out of science fiction, the simulation hypothesis. Okay, yeah, the idea that we're all living in a giant computer simulation, that one always makes my head spin. But is there actually any scientific basis for that, or is it uh, pure speculation? Well, it's definitely speculative, but there's a certain logic to it. Especially when you consider what we've been discussing about the non-physical nature of reality. Think about it. If time, space, and the fundamental forces are essentially uh, rules governing the universe, and those rules aren't bound by the physical laws we observe, then it's not such a crazy leap to imagine that those rules could be part of a highly complex simulation. So instead of thinking of the universe as a giant clockwork mechanism, we should maybe be thinking of it as uh, a sophisticated computer program. That's one way to look at it, and the source material uses this analogy to encourage us to think outside the box, to question our assumptions about what's possible. Even if we can't definitively prove or disprove the simulation hypothesis, it highlights how limited our current understanding of reality might be. I appreciate that, because it can be easy to get stuck in our familiar ways of thinking. But okay, the pivot back to something a bit more concrete. Though still pretty mysterious dark energy, the source mentions that it's causing the universe's expansion to accelerate, but we don't know what it is. Can you uh, shed some light on that? It's one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology today. We know the universe is expanding, that's been well established, but for the longest time, scientists assumed that gravity would eventually slow that expansion down. Makes sense, right? Everything's pulling on everything else, eventually it's gotta stop expanding. Exactly. But then, in the late 1990s, astronomers made a startling discovery. The expansion isn't slowing down at all, it's actually speeding up. Wait, so something is overcoming the force of gravity on a cosmic scale? What could possibly do that? That's the million dollar question. And the source material acknowledges that we simply don't have an answer yet. Dark energy is basically a placeholder term for whatever this mysterious force is that's counteracting gravity and pushing everything apart. It's like the universe has this hidden accelerator pedal and we have no clue what's pressing down on it. So we've got dark matter holding galaxies together, dark energy pushing the universe apart. It seems like we're surrounded by these invisible forces we barely understand. Indeed. And the source makes a point of emphasizing how much of our understanding of the universe relies on inference and deduction. Not just direct observation, we're like detectives piecing together clues, trying to make sense of a crime scene we can't fully see. So what are some of the leading theories about what dark energy might be? 
Because I'm guessing scientists aren't just content to say, well, we don't know, I guess we'll just move on. Of course not. There are several intriguing ideas out there. One possibility is that it's a property of space itself, something inherent to the fabric of the universe that causes it to expand. So it's not some exotic particle or unknown force, it's just uh, space doing its thing. That's one theory. Another idea is that there might be a new fundamental force at play that we haven't discovered yet, something that only becomes apparent at these vast cosmological scales. A whole new force. Talk about expanding our understanding of physics. It would be revolutionary. And of course, there's always the possibility that our current understanding of gravity is incomplete. And that once we have a more comprehensive theory of gravity, dark energy will simply fall into place. Okay, so lots of possibilities. But no firm answers yet. I get the feeling this is a mystery that will keep scientists busy for a long time to come. But you know what? Part of me finds that really exciting. The idea that there is still so much out there to discover even after centuries of scientific progress. Absolutely, and as the source material points out, who knows what technological advancements the future holds? Maybe someday we'll have instruments sensitive enough to directly detect dark matter and dark energy, unlocking entirely new realms of understanding. Okay, now you're getting me really fired up. I'm picturing, like, spaceships powered by dark energy, exploring the farthest reaches of the universe. Perhaps not quite spaceships, but the source does speculate on the possibility of harnessing these forces. Imagine, for instance, if we could manipulate dark matter to create stable wormholes, it could revolutionize space travel. Worm See, that's what I'm talking about, bending the fabric of space and time. But even if we set aside the more fantastical possibilities, the idea of understanding these forces at a deeper level is incredibly exciting. It is, and it highlights the importance of continuing to push the boundaries of scientific inquiry. But even as we explore these cosmic mysteries, we can't forget about the very real challenges facing humanity right here on Earth. A good point. The source touches on the implications of entropy for our planet and the future of life itself. Okay, back to the heat death thing, because I have to admit, it's been lurking in the back of my mind this whole time. It's a sobering concept, for sure. As entropy increases, the universe inevitably moves towards a state of maximum disorder, where everything eventually reaches a uniform temperature and no further change is possible. So eventually the sun will burn out, all the stars will die, and everything will just uh, fade away. That's the ultimate fate of the universe, according to our current understanding of physics. But the source material stresses that we're talking about time scales far beyond human comprehension. Okay, that's a slight relief. But it still makes you wonder about the long-term sustainability of life in the universe. It does, and it raises profound questions about the meaning and purpose of existence. If everything eventually ends in heat death, what's the point of it all? That's a deep question, and one that the source leaves open for us to ponder. But you know what? Even if the universe has a finite lifespan, that doesn't diminish the wonder and beauty of what we experience right now. I agree, it makes it all the more precious, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, and it makes me even more curious to explore the mysteries of the universe while we still can. But you know, for all this talk about the vastness of space, and the grand sweep of cosmic time, the source keeps circling back to one very intimate concept consciousness because ultimately it's through our own conscious experience that we perceive and interact with the universe right exactly and as we discussed earlier the source challenges the idea that consciousness is simply a product of the physical brain it suggests that there might be something more to it something that transcends our current understanding of the material world which brings us back to the question if consciousness isn't entirely physical, then what is it, and where does it reside? Whoa, okay, those are some big questions to unpack, and I have a feeling we're only just scratching the surface of this topic? It's a topic that has puzzled philosophers and scientists for centuries, and the source material doesn't pretend to have all the answers, but it does offer some uh, intriguing perspectives. Like what? Because I'm all ears at this point. We've talked about the universe expanding, invisible matter and energy, the eventual heat death of everything, and now we're diving into the mystery of consciousness. I'm starting to feel like I need a bigger brain just to keep up. Perhaps the most fascinating aspect of Source highlights is the idea that consciousness might not be limited to individual brains. It explores the possibility that there's a kind of um, universal consciousness, a fundamental field of awareness that permeates all of existence. Okay, hold on. Are we talking about like a cosmic mind, some kind of universal intelligence that everything is connected to? It's a concept that's been explored in various spiritual and philosophical traditions for millennia, 
and the source material suggests that there might be scientific evidence to support it. For instance, quantum entanglement, where particles seem to be instantaneously connected regardless of distance, could hint at a deeper level of interconnectedness in the universe. So instead of thinking consciousness as something that's generated solely by our brains, we should maybe think of it as a fundamental property of the universe itself. And our brains are just uh, receivers tuning into this universal signal. That's a compelling analogy, <laughs> and it raises the question, if there is such a thing as universal consciousness, what are its implications for our understanding of reality? Does it suggest a purpose or meaning to the universe that goes beyond our individual lives? Whoa, now those are some truly deep thoughts. I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed by the sheer scale of everything we've been talking about. It's like, the more we learn about the universe, the more we realize how much we don't know. I think that's a healthy perspective to have. The source encourages a sense of humility in the face of these vast mysteries. It's okay to acknowledge that we don't have all the answers. In fact, that's what drives scientific inquiry and philosophical exploration. You know, it's interesting. We started this deep dive by talking about how the source material emphasizes the non-physical aspects of the universe. Dark matter, dark energy, the native of time and space, and now consciousness. It's like the more we focus on the invisible, the more we realize that's where the real action is. It's a profound shift in perspective, isn't it? For centuries, science has focused on understanding the material world, the things we can observe and measure. But the source material makes a compelling case that the true nature of reality might lie beyond the realm of the purely physical. And that suggests that we might need to develop new ways of knowing new methods of inquiry if we truly want to unlock the secrets of the universe. Absolutely. The source argues that science, while incredibly powerful, might not be the only tool we need. It encourages us to explore other avenues of knowledge, such as philosophy, spirituality, and even art, to gain a more holistic understanding of existence. So what are some of the key takeaways you think our listeners should walk away with after this deep dive? Because I'll admit, I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything we've covered. Well, I think the source material successfully challenges us to expand our definition of what's real. It pushes us to look beyond the purely material and consider the possibility that the universe is far more complex and mysterious than we might have imagined. And that it's okay to embrace those mysteries, to acknowledge the limits of our current understanding. Precisely. The source encourages a sense of curiosity and wonder, reminding us that the journey of discovery is just as important as the destination. You know, it's funny, before we started this deep dive, I thought we were going to be talking about black holes, galaxies colliding, all that cool stuff. And we did touch on some of that, but this has been so much more mind expanding than I expected. It's like we've gone from astronomy to metaphysics in the blink of an eye. The universe has a way of surprising us, doesn't it? And the source material does a wonderful job of conveying that sense of awe and wonder. It does. So any final thoughts for our listeners? Because I feel like we've given them a lot to chew on. I think the source material leaves us with a powerful challenge to keep questioning, to keep exploring, and to never lose that childlike sense of wonder about the universe and our place within it. Beautifully said. And to everyone listening out there, thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. We'll see you next time for another deep dive into the unknown.